uh, given that Rob is here for, uh, he's one of the keynote speakers for the Emerging Market Conference, uh, co-organized by uh, Journal of Academy of Marketing Science, uh, a top journal in our field. So I would like to know uh, uh, from uh, Rob, uh, how do you think uh, is research on emerging markets going to evolve in the near future? Uh, with regards to marketing strategy or even consumer behavior or consumer based strategy do you have any thoughts on or have you done any research from the center which is on emerging market strategy or consumer based strategy sure yeah. um, lots of questions there sure. um, a couple of things one I do think marketing strategy has a, um, a big role to play in emerging markets um, but emerging markets are moving to being developed markets very quick uh -huh. Um, I would say the barriers from learning and, and marketing techniques are diffusing mm -hmm. across the world very fast. Mm -hmm. So um, probably where in the emerging market where I've spent the most time mm -hmm. is in China. China. And I see in you know five years they've made a tremendous move from being what I would consider pretty mm -hmm early stages on advanced marketing mm -hmm. to now doing things you know almost state of the art which is being made and is being done in developed markets. Gotcha. So I think that migration is happening fairly fast. Um, in some cases, people take, and this type of research doesn't play very well in the, in the academic journals, they take something that's been already shown in North America, let's say uh -huh. US, and they just apply, apply it okay. and retest it in an emerging market. That type of research is not well received because people say, well, why would it not operate the same? Mm -hmm. What's so different? Um, so in those cases, I don't think uh, the research is really that insightful. Where I think there's a better focus is things like I'm working with um, a couple scholars in China now on gotcha. the sharing economy. Mm -hmm. and, and another topic I'm working on is on mobile shopping. Mm -hmm. And if you look at China, for instance, China as a percent of shopping, retail shopping, they make more purchases on a mobile phone than any other country in the world. So in that way, China isn't the developing or the emerging market, they're the leader. So in that case, I think studying why is mobile shopping, why is using your phone better than bricks and mortar, and you know, there's some, some underlying trends, I think that would be a great topic. Sharing economy. Mm -hmm. In some economies, there is large populations of people with fairly low disposable incomes. Mm -hmm. In that case, maybe sharing economy is a way to get access to mm -hmm to goods and services where mm -hmm. they can buy it when they need it. Mm -hmm. And in, in that case, again, I think emerging economy, sharing economy is important in all oh, economies sure. pretty much. Right. But in some cases, it's advanced and is taking off the fastest in emerging markets. Gotcha. So I think that makes sense. Um, but just because it's quote emerging, in many cases, marketing works the same way. Okay, It isn't that different. different. It's maybe if you look at different demographic groups in the U.S. where maybe um, lower disposable income, you compare that to some developing economies, mm -hmm. no difference. And in some cases, like I study relationship marketing, and this is one area we do see a difference. Relationship marketing is really, as you well know, is, the, is really using relationships between um, firms or between different people at firms in order to impact business performance. Oh, and what we find, for instance, is that there's a big difference in how effective a relationship is at driving objective performance. And this is based on a meta-analysis of, gotcha. of about 50,000 relationships and over 100 academic research papers. That was all mathematically combined. We found that if you compare how much a relationship drives sales or profits in the U.S., and you compare that same relationship to BRIC countries, Brazil, yeah, course, Russia, Russia, India, India or China, China it's 55% more effective in the BRIC countries gotcha. than it is mm. in the US. Nice. Why? Because maybe the institutional systems used for governing business transactions mm. are not quite as developed right. in some of these developing mm. countries or these emerging markets. And because of that, people still use relationships. Mm -hmm. And relationships is how that trust, trust. is how they conduct the mm. business transaction. Gotcha. So we do see differences and things like that. Uh, but it's a question of degree more than being fundamentally, fundamentally different. different. Great points, thank you so much. So one another interesting thing about Rob is that he's not only a top-notch academic researcher, he has 
to my knowledge, at least three books, and I think there is another book which is coming out mm -hmm. on data analytics. And one of his uh, recent works, he has about a couple of Harvard Business Review articles as well, uh, which is uh, meant for practitioners and top executives in global MNCs. One of the uh, recent HPR Harvard Business Review article he published is on data, uh, big data and privacy issues, which is the most important thing right now uh, across globe. So let's hear what Rob has to say about uh, big data and privacy issues. Rob? Yeah, I do think, um, I have a book I'm working on now yeah. that is an intelligent marketer's guide to big data and privacy. Mm -hmm. And it's based on two or three academic papers we've done as far as, and as, mm -hmm and a, a summary paper in, in Harvard Business Review. And it's kind of interesting, as a marketing professor, mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time, and it's the number one program that's being added to schools today. Yeah. And that is marketing analytics, I or think. big data analytics. And what is the premise? The premise is that if we collect a lot of data about our customers, we can better target them. We can target them with the right product, we can target them at the right price point, mm -hmm. and at the right time. Mm -hmm. And with geo-targeting and using cell phones and such, we can even hit them right as they're walking into the right store. store. Right now, we're working on some campaigns where as you walk down a mall and we're, they're so accurate, we're not using GPS, we're using kind of cell phone ID. As they walk by the front of a store, 10 feet away, mm -hmm. we can send a coupon that's to your phone. Okay. Wow, that's yeah. pretty powerful. That's, that's okay. targeted. But guess what? People don't like to be stalked. And what we're finding is that many customers feel very violated <laughs> when they're over-targeted. Okay. There's a pretty famous, um, it was a newspaper article, um, and the New York Times picked up this article, so it became pretty popular, but it's an interesting story. A father was, um, a gentleman was getting this magazine from a retail store in the U.S. called Target. And he would open it, it would be a catalog for baby That's, things. Yeah. And he'd open it, and like, there's no babies here, he'd throw it away. He got about five or six of them over uh, a period of time, and he was complaining to Target, stop sending me these catalogs. Mm -hmm. Two months after his first catalog, mm -hmm. his daughter comes up and says, Dad, I have something to tell you. <laughs> so Target knew two months before Dad that his daughter was pregnant. pregnant. And the CEO of Target actually in an analyst report said one of the reasons their performance has been so good is that they can tell within two weeks the stage of a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And they target all these different stages with different products. Well, you can see how that bothers people. So I think, and there's been a lot in the news here lately with Facebook and all, but what we're seeing is I think big data is ultimately going to be limited by, and machine learning and some of this other um, analysis technique yeah. is going to be limited mm -hmm. by privacy. Gotcha. And I think it's going to be limited a couple ways. In, in the end of May, so I guess, oh, a month from today, okay. in May 25th, a law is, becomes effective in the European Union. Oh. It's called GDPR. Okay. It is a law that changes the way privacy and data can be tracked in Europe. Okay. Lots of changes, but one big one is that right now in the US especially, I know it'll probably be a little better, is that they, if you do something online with a firm, they can use your data, period. Okay. The only way you cannot, they can sell your data to a third party like Facebook and Google. Um, they're the number two, you know, those mm -hmm. two companies capture about 60% of the online ad market. Mm -hmm. Billions and billions of dollars. Gotcha. The only way to have that stop being done is to opt out. Mm -hmm. So opt out is where you go on their website, find mm -hmm. where it is, and say, I do not want you to target me or I don't want you to sell my data. Now, some firms don't even offer you the ability to opt out. Mm -hmm. However, in Europe with this new law, they change it. Mm -hmm. It's an opt-in system. So mm -hmm. firms can no longer use your data unless you go online and say, sure, okay. you can use my data to do it. Now, I'm sure firms are going to be smart, mm -hmm. and a lot of the system capabilities mm -hmm. are only given to you if they can use your data. So they there can. are good things about using your data. You don't have to re-enter it. They make suggestions that are targeted for you. I think Amazon book recommendations are probably one of the classics. However, most companies have gone farther than that. Mm -hmm and they probably have gone so far, now there's mm -hmm. going to be a backlash. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be interesting to see how companies like Google, mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. um, how they can operate mm -hmm. in this new legislative environment. Yeah. 
Now in the U.S. these laws haven't been passed primarily because those companies are some of the top political lobbyists and they're spreading a lot of money around Washington <laughs> okay. in order to make sure these laws are passed or if they are passed they're at least presented in a way that doesn't cause, um, cause them as much pain. But it'll be, it'll be interesting to see this. So I think this privacy is going to be a very big push and ultimately is potentially going to limit the effectiveness of some big data operations. In many cases, firms offer loyalty programs. And the only reason they offer the loyalty program mm -hmm. is that's the way they get to track you as an individual customer. Gotcha. Because just think if I go to pick on Starbucks. If I go on Starbucks and I have a cup of coffee this morning mm -hmm. and I pay cash and then I go in the afternoon, I pay or my credit card or cash again, they have no way to know these two are the same person. But once I use my loyalty card and they give me a free cup of coffee every so often, so that's what I get some value out of it. Okay, is, but what they get is they get to identify me as a customer and they can track me over time. They understand when I buy other sandwiches, they understand mm -hmm. what kind of coffee I buy. And they're um, learning about your behavior. And, and they learn and right. they can take what they learn about me right. And then they can find other, if I'm a good customer with high mm -hmm. customer lifetime value, mm -hmm. they can target other customers like me and they'll know what those people like. What do you think are going to be the five big trends uh, in marketing, uh, uh, five big trends as a message for marketing academia and marketing practice? What, do you, mm -hmm. what would be your thoughts on those? Yeah, it's, it's always hard to narrow it down just to, to five specific numbers. Okay. But, um, I think there's a number of trends and what I have come to believe and it's one of the reasons I really believe in working with businesses mm -hmm. and nearly all of my personal research mm -hmm. I work with businesses and my doc students and, mm -hmm. and most of my research co-authors we work straight with businesses because I think they have the leading ideas <laughs> and then academics the idea doesn't always shake out to academics mm -hmm. till a number of years before so I think if you want to be on the cutting edge um, I think you want to be working with firms because in some cases I think they're more on the cutting edge than academics are, um, at least in, in substantive issues. But if I look at some things, I think Internet of Things will be mm -hmm. phenomenally big. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by Internet of Things? If, if you look at some of the predictions on how much Internet is going to be connected to everything you're doing. Gotcha. Let's look at something. I was at one of the biggest appliance white goods manufacturers in China about three weeks ago. And they were showing me some of their new refrigeration equipment. Mm -hmm. So on the front of this refrigerator, there's a touch screen. Mm -hmm. And the refrigerator is connected to the internet. So it can even sense when your milk is low, mm -hmm. based on the weight of the milk, on, if you program it. And it'll automatically reorder it. Or you can program it that on the front, when you notice something's low, you hit one button on the front, it automatically reorders it. So there's building in automatic reordering, they're building in very easy reordering, and there'll be ads popping up on this. But besides all that, the amount of data they're collecting and storing on you, they know at your house how often you open your refrigerator door. Wow. They know when you grab a drink out, they have sensors on the bottom of a lot of the trays. <laughs> They know how often you reopen. They're, some of the market managers there was suggesting that in the future, they might sell or give you a refrigerator for free. Just if you commit to doing all of your repurchasing through the refrigerator through their system. So in other words, you could be a big retailer. The retailer will make a, uh, a deal with the manufacturer of the refrigerator. The refrigerator will be sold for free, but wow. it'll be hard. It'll be linked through the internet with... Very interesting. So this is happening on okay. refrigeration. It's happening in the cupboards. Okay. It's happening in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be very interesting because it's going to disintermediate a lot of the retailers. retailers right. Not just the brick and mortar retailers, which mm -hmm. we all know are being squeezed out in some cases, mm -hmm. but it'll also disintermediate some of the online retailers. <laughs> you don't even need to go online and order it. It'll be straight from, let's say, the refrigerator or the cupboard, straight to some firm. Gotcha. Uh, I think that will be a dramatic change. Mm -hmm. I think another dramatic change is mobile. Mobile. Okay. Mobile shopping. Mm -hmm. It is phenomenal what's happening. And the leaders in this is in China. Mm -hmm. um, a typical, I, was, um, I just spent a couple weeks there. I go there maybe three or four times a year. Mm -hmm. And 
they buy almost everything they're doing. There's a number of people I interviewed and I talked to, they do 100% of their banking and their shopping that isn't done in the store, they do on their phone. No PC, no laptop, no iPad, they're doing it all on their phone. And I think that interface mm -hmm. is very, very important, and especially with geotargeting. Mm -hmm. For interesting, I was um, at one meeting with one firm, and I was very surprised this firm told me, and I won't mention their name, even though I, I wasn't on a non-disclosure, they said it was a very large telecommunications firm and they, in China, and they said, we sell the location of all of our customers who visit Macau. Now, Macau is an island off the coast of China, mm -hmm where there's a lot of casinos. And if you, as a customer of this telecommunication, if you go to the casino, okay. they can tell because they know what cell tower and their GPS, mm -hmm. and they say, wow, you gamble a lot. Ah. And they take that data and they sell it to banks. <laughs> so now if you go ask for a loan from that bank. Well, they know you gamble. They know you gamble. <laughs> I think it has privacy issues, it's uh -huh. using big data, um, it has mobile, it's very important. Mm -hmm. This adding geo it's, distance is mm -hmm. very, very important. When they know where you are, mm -hmm. not only who you are, mm -hmm. very but important. where you are, the two together allows firms to target much, much better. Wow. But it also brings up privacy concerns because right. our, is your location confidential? Is that something that should be protected? Mm -hmm. Thank you.